have so much material. Let's come to seated. I think I'll turn my heater off. Oh, it's warm. <clears throat> seated for a chant of an om. Seated for a gathering. <laughs> Mango is seated as well. Oh, all right, closing down your eyes. Closing down your eyes. And just see if you can bring up an inner smile and an outer smile. Kudos to you all for actually making the effort to come to the mat, with or without jammies. The idea for practice is to move, of course, to find that sense of, even though the outside environment is, is busy, is active, there's other energies, to actually practice drawing our senses inwards and becoming inwardly drawn. And often as it is the case in yoga practice, we get those glimpses of our unconscious workings. And when we become aware of those, then we have the real freedom, the freedom of choice to recognize it and go, oh, this is why this is, and this is what I take off the mat, and this is how I function, and this is probably you know, energy, pain, belief, or anything that I have to let go of. Then we have choice to either keep it, discard it, alter it, just revel in that sense of knowing. So perhaps you'd like to set an intention for your practice. And while I talk, you close your eyes and you start to connect to your breath. What is an intention that comes up from the unconscious? Feeling into the practice, feeling into the day ahead, feeling into the week ahead. No. Let's chant an om to bring us together as a group. Let's exhale together. Big inhale. And starting to come into ujjayi breath, breath with sound. Starting to notice the breath against your nostrils. If the nostril passageway is free, otherwise you breathe in and out of your mouth and you still feel that breath. The inhalation breath, the air is cool. The exhalation breath, the air is slightly warmer. Now with your ujjayi breath, I'm not suggesting we'll make it automatic, but it is happening and then so take a moment to feel into your physical body and if there is areas where that feeling sense that feeling awareness can't quite get in or there is an area where the there is a bit, bit of attention seeking that sings out straight away then see if you can bring your ujjayi breath not just the breath with the energy but the sound as well into those areas not in a forceful way, but simply in a kind and compassionate way to bring awareness, energy and vitality to those areas that need it the most because they sing out or you feel you can't quite get to. And just take a moment and sometimes we start at the head and maybe we get stuck in the arms somewhere, we get stuck at the chest or the mind starts to wander. It's absolutely normal. Just bring the focus back and see if you really can take another moment to systematically go through your body and go, okay, I can bring awareness everywhere and where it's a little bit stuck or not so fluid and soft. Breathe that ujjayi breath there. And let this be about yourself. Let this be about where you feel is a stuckness, is fluidity not so easily to come by this morning. 
it may be different for the person that practices with you here. It may be different for you today, the next week. Nice. And then slowly, you're welcome to keep your eyes closed, just releasing the hands. And then bringing the legs into a casual, or let's open the eyes, into a casual sort of Upavista Kanasana position. And we bring the arms up and we're just going with our upper body in a circular motion. And just seeing if we can swing. Yeah, I'll just have to assume you have space. That's it. So you know the purple blocks in the studio, or maybe you've got one. We just pretend you've got them between your hands and then we change direction. So notice how this feels in your belly. And then let's make it a little bit more conscious. Let's see if we can reach forward, slow it down a little, reach to the side, engage the legs, engage the belly and lean back with the torso and with the arms and then over to the side. So in other words, slow it down and make it a little bit more conscious with Mula Bandha and Uddiyana Bandha. Is your breath still soft and fluid? That's it, good. Releasing the hands, bringing the feet together. Hands to the side, and we're just going to point and flex. Can you see? I feel like you can't see. Point and flex. So we're sitting here in an L shape. One foot's pointing, and the other one is flexing. And if you want to look out of, out of the window, that's fine. And if you want to stay present, then stay present. Yeah, I can see everything. <laughs> Good. And then see if we can do this with the knees. So you just sit here. And if you go, well, that's a little bit too easy for Bettina. Can we do it a little? Then you just start to lift the knees. It's like a little bit of a cycling action, but it's not round. And then can we do that idea? And if it's too strong, you bring your fingers to the floor. Can we pedal with the legs? Can we bend the knees and pedal? Yeah. Can we even bring the arms up? Thanks for the suggestion, Russell. Good. Can we come into a squat? And then we're not staying in the still squat. It's almost like you want to draw circles with your heels, with your feet, with your tailbone. That's it. If you don't want to use the hands, you can do this free flowing and go, okay, okay, what is, what's my focus? What am I drawing circles with? And then change direction. Maybe you need to come up higher. Maybe we all come higher up. A half goddess stand. That's it, that's it. Bring the hands onto the thighs, lift the chest, take the feet a little wider, come into that goddess idea. And then hanging forward, let's make it a wider tanasana. And we're just swinging to the left side. This is not a traditional um, prasarita paratanasana, so the feet can stay facing outwards. You come as far to the behind as you can, that knee can stay bent, and then you come forward as far as you can. I'm just assuming you have space. And then we're going over to the side and behind, just feeling into your body in a fluid way. And then we come through the legs and we go all the way behind. You can bend your knees. In fact, maybe more intelligent to bend the knees. And then coming forward and then we do one more cycle. To the side, to the behind as much as you can. Beautiful, over to the front. Let me see to the other side. Knees aren't locked, have them slightly bent. Beautiful. And then what do we have to do? Our oh, backwards still. There we go. Nice. And then you toe your feet together, come into a tradi traditional Uttanasana and slowly curl up. Curling up, vertebra by vertebra. Good. Crossing at the heart. And we're going into a big circle coming from the hips. So let's lean to one side. Knees are slightly bent, you lean the upper torso or the upper body forward over to the side. And we're coming back behind. You make that as big a back bend as you need to. And then we're going to the same side again. That's it. So the articulation comes out of the hips and out of your, your spine. That's it. Let me see. And then the other side. Um, Russell have a little look. So really crossing at the heart. So you can you can actually have your elbows at the chest. That makes you feel a little safer, safer as if you give yourself a hug. Yeah, so feel that your elbows and your arms are against your chest and your belly. And then nice and slow. And let the head come into the equation now as well. So the head hangs forward. The head, head, head toddles over to the side, goes back behind. 
changing direction one more time. Let me see, looking good. Feel into it. This is warming up, but oh, it's not really yogic. What am I going to do here? It's not a traditional classical yoga pose. Beautiful. And then we're coming to stand still and we're just letting the head roll. So the cervical spine, windscreen vipers over, over to the side, back behind. Beautiful. Change for a moment the cross of the arms and then we change direction in the neck as well. And so by now I'd like to think we have a good idea as to how the body feels in at least the larger parts. Oh, maybe there's sound effects here. And then releasing, brilliant. So keeping the feet hip distance, we're going to come into that release, the arms up, arms up, maybe hips forward, maybe a bit of a back bend here and then exhale, hands to the side. You can exhale forcefully. You can exhale through your mouth. Let go. If the Sunday morning is your, your practice time, just let go of everything in the past week. You know, be in isolation. Maybe we had discussions where we felt like, oh, I could have had a different tone of voice. Oh, I could have made a different decision. Just let it go. That sense of forgiveness. Forgive yourself. You know? That's it. Emma, see if you can bend your knees as well. So we can come into as steep a as squat as you like. A few more rounds. Inhale, maybe leaning back, maybe the back bend gets larger and larger, and then coming forward. Did I say one more? Yeah, let it go. Beautiful. And then the side bend, but we'll do it as an energetic idea. So say the right hand comes onto your chest, the left hand reaches back, that's your inhale, and then you change sides, that's your exhale. Turn the head to the back hand, and then, yeah, just make sure you have your knees not locked. Inhale, exhale, and this the hand that you draw to the chest receives. And you know, maybe you know in your conscious mind what you want to receive, and the back hand just let go. And I quite like this with vigorous breath. Now, change, change to which side you exhale. I always have to stop. Exhale, yeah, that's it. Let me see a different screen. Beautiful. This is for you, just warming up. Maybe you want to wiggle the torso around a little more. Beautiful. Excellent. Oh, the, the Sabrina household has joined us. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Sabrina, Dirk. And then releasing. And then let's have a little wiggle. I often say this, but we never make it actually officially. Wrists wiggle, elbows wiggle, shoulders wiggle, chest wiggle, hips wiggle, knees wiggle, and the ankles wiggle. Oh dear, we're sending this to the cloud. <laughs> Make noise, turn around. All right, okay, that's enough. Let's come to the front edge of the mat. It's not too much fun here, okay? Salutations. Now, how can you become still after this wiggle bit here? Can you? And notice how, what, what do we do? You know, the mind is like, oh my God, the breath draws you inwards. Come into Ujjayi breath. Come into your alignment. Sometimes what I see is sort of the fingers are just kind of dangling. There is energy down your fingertips. <clears throat> Sorry. Nice. Salutation A. Inhale. Urdhva Hastasana. Good. Exhale. Uttanasana. Halfway lift. Inhale. Exhale. Back down dog. High plank, inhale, let it flow, chaturanga, maybe knees down, be kind. Open up, inhale, exhale, downward facing dog, beautiful. Now this down dog, I suggest you step your feet in a little. <clears throat> That's it. What happens in down dog? You can still walk your dog, you can still wiggle your head, wiggle your hips, let me see. Nice. Good. Last exhale here. Inhale onto tippy toes. Take it slow. Bend your knees and then jump up high so you can land lightly forward. Halfway lift. Inhale. Hands can be on the shins. Exhale. Fold all the way forward. Strong legs, strong belly. Come all the way up. Inhale. Reaching up. That's when the inhale finishes. And with the exhale, you bring the hands to the heart or to the side the way we started. Excellent. Second round. Inhale. Exhale, reach forward, feel this in your thighs and in your belly. Good, all the way forward. Halfway lift, inhale. 
Exhale into down dog. High plank, inhale, chaturanga. Nice. Open up, inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Step your feet in a little. Now, can we feel the energy of the upper body? This is teamwork. The upper body is leaning against the lower body. Lower body leans against the upper body. This is teamwork. This is not the upper body pushing the lower body away. Good. Let your head hang. Gaze is to the toes or to the knees. That's it, Dirk. Nice. Beautiful. Good, Jerry. I can see you. Turn your upper arms outwards a little. Triceps towards each other. Last exhale. Inhale, tippy toes. Exhale. Land lightly. Halfway lift, looking up. Exhale, folding all the way. Don't cut yourself short. Strong legs come up. Beautiful. And exhale to release. Third round. Inhale, Udva Hastasuna. Don't fight the heat. Exhale, come forward. Good. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. High plank, inhale. Slow chaturanga, elbows back to your hips. Opening up, cobra or an up dog. Be strong. Exhale, downward facing dog for one. Gaze, your drishti point to your toes or to your knees. Let your head hang. For two, your hands push into the floor, everything else lifts up. Feet and hands push down, everything else lifts. For three, we're lifting from the belly. Beautiful, we're still there. For four, inner smile, outer smile. And five, inhale onto the toes. Let me see. Exhale, land lightly. Your head is still looking forward. Good. Halfway lift, inhale, open. Exhale, fold a little deeper, draw in from your belly. And then strong legs come up. Beautiful. Releasing here. Let's do salutation B. Chair pose and then we move into warriors. We do a few fancy bits maybe. Chair pose here, Utkatasana. Inhale. Beautiful. Look up. Exhale. Fold forward. Drishti is towards the knees now. Halfway lift. Inhale. Exhale down dog. High plank. Inhale. Exhale. Chaturanga. Don't speed up. Let it flow, open up, good. Exhale, down dog. Left heel in, right leg lightly steps forward between the hands when we come into warrior one. And we release the hands to start with. We really find our distance this morning. I'd like you to aim for thighs parallel, that front thigh parallel towards the floor. Yeah, chest lifted, shoulders dropping. Excellent. Shoulders being okay, let's come into reverse namaste. So this bit, that's it. Shoulders not being okay, just hold your elbows. Aha, what I'm seeing is we're, we're, we're lacking a little coming forward. So the hips forward, chest forward. Lisa, turn forward. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a twist. And then I'd like you to have some energy in your back leg. And then I'd like you to lift your front heel. Inhale, lift, exhale, bring it down, good. Inhale, lift again, exhale, bring it down, good. Keep it lifted if you can, leaning into that front leg a little more. Releasing the hands, bringing the arms up. Inhale, good. If it's too much to keep that front heel lifted, bring it down, but see if you can actually bring the elbows forward and the fingers pointing back down towards your spine. And then the elbows come up to the ceiling. Good. So we're lunging forward. We're lifting the elbows up to the ceiling, but we also bring them forward. So massive stretch around the side body and that armpit area. Good. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, frame your foot. Step back lightly, down dog. Nice work. High plank, inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Let me see, slow it down. Cobra or your up dog. Legs are strong. Good. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right heel in, left leg forward, warrior one. You can come into your traditional variation first. <clears throat> Excuse me, good. And then release the hands for a moment. So we can actually feel into that alignment. Yeah, yeah, widen your stand. Some of you, I think you're holding back. You could widen your stand, good. And then to not feel this pinching in the lower back, tuck that tailbone under. So be long in your hip flexor here. Beautiful, reverse namaste, or holding the elbows the other way. And then facing forward, rather than 
casually just where we would naturally go. Yeah. Beautiful. Good. Good. Lifting the heel. Heel lift. Thank you, Marie. Inhale, lift. Exhale, down. Can we do that? Oh, maybe lift a shorten the distance. Can we stay up here? Can we bring the arms up? Fingers pointing back behind. Elbows up. We've done this this week with the fingers interlaced, but this is a different idea. So the elbows up to the ceiling and forward. If the heel needs to come down, it needs to come down. Can you stay? Can you breathe? Can you feel some sensation, some opening around that whole um, armpit area? Good. Still facing forward. That's it, Lisa. Good, Cassandra. Good. And then inhale, reaching. Exhale, framing your foot. Notice how your belly needs to draw in. Otherwise, this is very strong on the shoulders. Step back down, dog. Nice. High plank. Slow chaturanga. Let me see. Good. Look forward, Cassandra. Inhale to look up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Five breaths here. If that's too strong, you know what I'm going to say. You can come into tabletop position or you can come into child's pose. A few more breaths. I'm just switching the screen. Nice, good work. Beautiful stillness with the breath. Let yourself attach to the story of your breath. Soft and even, good. I know it's more than five breaths. Last exhale here, inhale, tippy toes. Exhale, jump up high so you can land lightly. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, fold a little deeper and chair pose to come up, inhale. And we stay in chair pose. Let's tuck the tailbone under. So it's not a sticking outing. It's a tucking under. Beautiful. Hands to the side. And then the palms face up. I'm assuming you've got space. Bring the arms up. Let's do an embracing of the full moon in our chair pose. Tailbone tucked under. So the spine is long. Fingertips touch. Elbows bent. As if you're embracing the full moon. I know this is strong. Inhale here, exhale. We stay in chair pose. We push the wall away. Yeah, that's it. Inhale here, exhale. Tucking the fingers under. So you feel this in your wrists. Inhale here, exhale. Release, come forward. Uttanasana. We do another round of salutations. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, back down dog. High plank, inhale. Look forward over that cliff for your chaturanga. Be solid. Open up, inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Beautiful. Let's come into tabletop position. <clears throat> Just a few rounds of cat and cow. But I'd like you to choose to start the movement either from your head, from your cervical spine, or from your buttocks. Mm -hmm. Which have you chosen? Good. Let me see. That's it. A few more rounds. Good. You're welcome to practice with your eyes closed. Come back to Ujjayi breath. Let this be a long roundedness and a long concavedness. And so we're training our mind here to stay focused and to give this, to be really yogic, to give this simple movement, it's like, oh, it's Ken Carl. The same attention as, you know, a warrior with, you know, fancy arm movements or an arm balance. Let's come back into downward facing dog. That's it. We're coming into, um, yeah, we're coming to three-legged dog. Three-legged dog on the right. Inhale, lift the right heel up. Exhale, right knee up to the ceiling. The hip opens. Beautiful. Now we stay here for a few breaths. In a moment's time, we come forward into a high plank with that knee that's up on the ceiling to the opposite elbow, to your left elbow. So inhale here, exhale. Come into a high plank, draw the knee into the chest and bring that right knee into your left elbow crease or thereabouts. Now this is strong. So opposite knee, opposite elbow. And when we hover there, we keep breathing. How is your strength this morning? Inhale here, exhale, three-legged dog. And one more time, taking the dog to the bushes here. Yeah, if you've rested, join us again. We stay on each movement for a few breaths. Now, if you can, Bring that knee up a little higher and really feel the lower belly stretching and opening. Inhale here, exhale, bring that knee into its same side elbow. 
So no crossing at the midline, just a higher plank with that knee lifted. For three, for two, for one, raise your breath, downward facing dog. Beautiful, let's come into tabletop position again. Very nice, and this time we go sideways. Are you warming up? That's good. All right, so sideways or disco cat, it's like you want to rotate your belly button. So we go to the side, we go belly button down, we go over to the other side and we go up. And then we do a few, I could show you uh, front end, a few movements on one side. You know, and when you normally, when you're in class, you can't actually see too well perhaps what I'm doing. So here, let yourself be guided by how that feels for you. You know, if the, if the hips come into the equation more and the elbows and the shoulders, that's fine. Each side one more time. Nice, good. And then we come to a standstill, we come back into downward facing dog and we do our three-legged dog on the other side. Left heel, slow it down. If it's too strong for anyone this morning, Bring that back knee, bring that right knee down. Otherwise, three-legged dog, taking the dog to the bushes. Ah, bring that knee up to the ceiling. Feel that in the front of the hip. Belly strong, breath is solid. Inhale here, exhale, high plank. With that left knee hovering around the right elbow crease. And we're still here. And we hover for three. Beautiful, good heli. For two. For one, we come back into that, taking the dog to the bushes. Beautiful. Even looking through your left armpit area. Downward facing dog arms. So the upper arms roll outwards. We're still in taking the dog to the bushes. Inhale here, exhale. We're coming back. Do we do opposite elbow one more time? I think so. That's it. Nice. Where's your breath? Draw in from your belly. One last three-legged dog. We won't hold it for too long. And then we come to the same side elbow. I know this could be strong. Beautiful. For three, for two, for one. Back into downward facing dog. And we walk our hands back to the feet. That was a long hold. Uttanasana. Toe heel your feet together. And then just pause for a moment. Give yourself a hug. So hugging behind the shins or, you know, the thighs, knees, wherever you get to. I'm coming off, I'm switching screens. Nice. And become still there. Yeah, it's easier said than done, isn't it? If the pets are hanging around. Nice. Beautiful. Good. And it isn't, stay there, there's not, nothing to miss out on. It isn't really how far forward you bend. If you need to bend your knees, do that. It's about making space in your body and practicing the yoga so it suits you. Beautiful. Can we come up? Can we toe heel our feet together? Can we come up again into a chair pose? Inhale. Good. Exhale where we are. Bring the hands in prayer position. Good. Inhale here. Exhale. Extend the right leg back, coming into warrior three. Yeah, it's been a bit of a favorite lately. So you extend your upper body forward. You bring it parallel towards the floor. You lead with that back heel. Whoopsies, that's it. And your prayer hands into your chest give you a beautiful, beautiful stability. We're coming out, <clears throat> excuse me, the way we came in. Yeah, we're coming back into our chair pose. Nice. Good. Seems a little easier with the hands in prayer. Don't let your buttocks stick out like this. Tuck them under. Nice. Beautiful. Inhale here, exhale the other side. So unfold slowly. That standing leg can be bent until that left leg is straight, until the torso is parallel, and then you start to straighten it. And then be solid. You will feel this in your, in your buttocks tomorrow, if we stay long enough. Good. And then hard lift the shoulders back if you want to work it a little more. Absolutely. Good. Nice, Sean. Yeah, if you fall out, just come back in. Slowly releasing out. We're staying in the chair pose. <clears throat> Last exhale here and then inhale to come up and releasing. And just depending on where you're at, find your front edge of your mat again and we flow. Urdhva Hastasana, inhale, beautiful. Exhale, come forward. Halfway lift, inhale. 
Exhale back into downward facing dog. And then we pause in high plank. We will go into side plank. And I really suggest you take an easier variation if this is a bit strong on your shoulders. Let's go to the right so I can see you. Inhale onto the tippy toes, exhale. Right heels to the right, right hips to the right, left arm up. Now this is full side plank, too much, bring your right knee down. And then we can stay, we can stay forever. Yes, looking up, feel your trikonasana in this shape. Inhale here, exhale, coming back into a high plank. Let's wiggle back into diamond facing dog, walk your hands back to the feet. Toe heel your feet together. That's it, come into a high toe stand. Come onto the tippy toes, bend your knees, bend your hips, we sink the buttocks down. Ah, oh, similar to chair pose, isn't it? Can we do this? Marie, Sean. <laughs> there we go. There we go, and we come up, is this all? I was just after the feet here, yeah. Coming back up, beautiful, coming forward into an Uttanasana, an intense Uttanasana, hands next to the feet, nose to the knees, beautiful. And then we walk forward again into downward facing dog. Beautiful, and from down dog we come into high plank, inhale. This time over to the left. Side plank, so shift onto the ball of the foot. The legs are solid though. The right arm reaches up. So keep your legs solid, keep your belly solid. This isn't leaning into the left arm. If it's too much, your left leg comes down like this and then you feel the lift. So there is length between the shoulder blades. There's length in the chest. Beautiful, legs are solid, remember? Belly is solid. Inhale here, exhale, high plank. Inhale here, exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale here, exhale, hands. Walk back to the feet. Yes, a bit of hip mobility. Beautiful. Let's come into Padangustasana. Toe heel, the feet hip distance apart. Pull against your big toe with the pistol grip. And then look up, inhale. Exhale, pulling yourself forward. Elbows bend. Top of the head moves towards the floor. I want you to feel as you draw in from your lower belly, you hollow your diaphragm and the breath can move freely. Let's stay in this beautiful forward fold for a few breaths. Shoulders away from the ears. You feel that opening in your buttocks and your hamstrings. Beautiful. Last exhale here. Inhale, pull against the big toes. And then exhale, let's come into Padahastasana. I'll show you front on. We're standing onto the palms of the hands. Yeah, so really toes into the wrists. Inhale to look up and exhale, draw yourself a little closer. Beautiful. Now that warms up the whole back line of the body, doesn't it? Uh, I'd like you to stay for a few breaths. I'm coming off so I can see. Good. Good. Shoulders lift away from the ears, so make space for the neck, but the head is hanging. You're not missing out on anything. Beautiful. Ujjayi breath. Enjoy what you're doing. Yes, and if it's a little bit of a long distance between your hands and your feet, then you bend your knees. If your hamstrings don't give you that flexibility, absolutely fine. And then inhale to look up, and then we're facing this way. Exhale, hands to the hips. Strong legs come all the way up to standing. Inhale, and exhale at the top. Brilliant. Can we do one more flow? Are you at the front edge of the mat? I'll just turn around. Urdvahastasana, inhale. Exhale, come forward. The feet can be hip distance apart, doesn't matter. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale back into your down dog. High plank, inhale, and give me a beautiful chaturanga, looking over that cliff, shoulders away from the ears. Beautiful. And then simply into cobra. Sorry if, I, if I'm holding you. Can we stay in our cobra? Fingers are not pushing, but just little finger taps. Interlace the hands behind your back, or shoulders too strong just aeroplane arms, and then lifting up a little more, pushing into the tops of the feet. Good, tucking the tailbone under. One last lift, inhale, good. And exhale to release. Hands next to the chest, into child's pose. Beautiful. And we're coming just back to breathing here. That's it. That's it. If you don't want to have forehead on the floor, have two fists, two palms. 
Nicely done. Hmm. That was good. Beautiful. I'm suggesting to come into tabletop position. Come into tabletop position, we just do a little flow with our with our shoulders. So right arm, or any, any arm really, I'll do the right so I can see your right arm up into a twist, out of tabletop position. And then exhale, feeding it through, threading off the needle, and we go all the way through and we come into a little pause. So if you've got the right arm through as well, then you end up on your right side of your head, on your right shoulder, and you can bring your left arm up and bring it behind the back and just hook into the hip crease of the right hip crease here. Good. But it is an active position here. So sometimes we can have a snoozle here, but I'd like us to make this active. So your top shoulder, which is if you followed my instruction, would be the left shoulder, reaches up to the ceiling and your right shoulder reaches through. Remember in our side plank and in our normal trikonasana, which is what we didn't do today, you want to open the chest, can you feel this here? Can you aim for that same side plank idea? Use the twist, you want to open. Beautiful. Last exhale here, untangle your left hand or your top hand, drawing back and coming back into tabletop position. Maybe you have to have a wiggle. Good, left arm up or the other side, I'll show you this way. Beautiful, reaching up, reaching up. And then just notice where this goes before we go anywhere else. I wish we all had props. Just notice that. And then reaching through all the way as if I'm pulling out your left hand and your left arm. Oh, it gives beautiful traction on the left shoulder blade and the right arm can come up, you can hook it under. Or you need to stay, leave the right hand or the top hand on the floor, just shoulder, monitor your shoulder. That's it, do it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You, just, you know, we take this, and that's a yoga practice so beautiful. You take this into your body so the breath can flow freely. And if you're, if you're kind of going, I'm in this stuck position, I don't like it, I can't breathe. What are you telling your nervous system? It's like, oh, send hormones. I'm in flight and fright. You want to. Coax that nervous system into that calm space. Nice, good, Joey. Good, Sabrina. Nice, dude. And if we can't do that with the breath and we have to modify, be a bit more comfortable in the shape. Yeah. Beautiful. So we can do this in any situation we find ourselves in. Isolation, insulation, whatever. We can come back to calmness and then slowly releasing out. Brilliant. Let's come into forearms. I'll just swivel around here. Well done. Hold your upper arms. Coming into dolphin, just for our beautiful forearm balance practice. Swivel open on your elbow joint and then interlace right down and close your fist. And this triangle is solid now. Knees underneath the hips, tuck your toes, lift your hips. Oh, and just let the head hang freely. Beautiful. Now feel energetically that you need to actually push your fist um, and your wrists and your elbows and your forearms into the floor and everything else lifts up. And then you get to your feet and you want to ground your feet down, but your thighs and your buttocks and your spine all lifts up. So let's not just hang out, I'm coming off. Let's feel into this energetically. Let's not just hang out. So what's touching the floor, the forearms and the wrists push down and the feet push down, preferably everything off your foot and everything else lifts up. And if you find that strong, then you come out, you reset and we go back in. I'm, I'm challenging you here, I understand. Find some softness. So first we come into safety. Then we move from the center. Yeah, I know I keep talking. You can come out, have a little snoozle and then you come back in. Are you connected to your center? Are you lifting from your pelvic floor? And then A is alignment. Have you checked your alignment? That's that bit where we're pushing down, we're lifting up. If you've rested, come back in. This will, this will go on for another few breaths here. Yeah. And then 
And then you feel into, can you deepen it? And then you need to soften. So all these little beautiful steps, beautiful, let's come out. That was a long hold. <laughs> like, oh, really? Beautiful. Okay, we're not gonna take this just further yet. We're going to come to seated. We're going to come into Upavista Kanasana. Yeah, we'll just let that go. Let that go nicely here. Yeah, Upavista Kanasana legs is wide. If you're not sitting comfortably like this and you don't have a prop nearby, you could just really roll up your mat and go, oh, it gives me a bit of, bit of elevation, that's it. But if you have a bolster, a block, sit on your block. Lift and lengthen, inhale, and we've been doing this lately, coming forward, the spine is long, the shoulders are broad, coming forward. Ooh, and maybe on a Sunday morning, or maybe if you haven't practiced all week, you register this here straight away. But you come as far forward. And Sean, dorsiflex your feet. So energy in the legs. Yeah, here we go. Lift and lengthen, inhale, and then coming forward. Beautiful. Beautiful. We want to make space. We want to keep the length in the spine here. Yep. So no coming back. There's nothing happening. The breath can't move freely. And I better not go into the Vistens family because the media is just sort of coming forward flat. It's like, okay, five years later, maybe for us as well. No, the idea is that you make space in your body where it's necessary, where it's required. Let's have 10 more soft soothing breaths, heart forward, shoulders back. Can you find the presence again? Toes roll outwards, thighs are engaged. Soften your gaze, soften the breath always soften into the shape as we take this off the mat we soften into a situation and you know momentarily acceptance we've been talking about this doesn't mean defeat doesn't mean we say yes to everything i'll just soften into it last exhale here then slowly from your belly this is where the center the center line is always switched on and we're going to one side yeah i'm coming to the left so i can see you so it's a twisting towards that one side and then a forward bend. So it's twisting and forward bending. Oh, where does this go? Now, because we're moving away from the other leg, don't let it go to sleep. That's it. Good, nice, Sean. Nice, Marie. Good, Lisa. Good, Cassandra. So it's useful to have the hands to the floor so you can drop your shoulders. It's almost like... The hands glued to the floor want to make your spine a little longer. Beautiful. I'm just switching screens. Let's have a few more breaths here. Beautiful. Oh, marvelous positions, yogis and yoginis. I know it's a long hold. We can't just flow. Beautiful. And then coming forward over to the other side. But let's, let's face this first. So it's a twist first. So you rotate and then you lift and lengthen and aim for the forward fold. The leg we're moving away is still engaged. Are you safe in this position? Yeah, I mean, if the discomfort is pain, then that's not safe. Let me see. Are you working from your center? There is, there is that connection to the core. Are you working with that alignment? The spine is long on the inhale, exhale through both heels. Then what's next? Can you deepen it? Yeah, maybe the side body gives you a little bit more. And then can you soften it? Soften and surrender into the shape. Yeah, give the pets a cuddle in the meantime. In my legs, in, engaged. Yes, yes, beautiful. And then inhale to come up. And exhale to release. And we have a bit of space and we have a bit of fun. I know, hell, it's a long hold. Let's sit up like this. Hold your big toes. We've been doing this lately. And then we're coming up like this, or maybe all the way, point your toes. So there is energy. I want your toes to push away from your fingers. And then the chest lifts and the heart drops, and maybe even the head can go back. Oh, we couldn't do this here with 15 of us. So enjoy. You know, smart. That's it, Helen. And there is a fine line between if I'm pulling too much, I'm going to fall back. Yeah, a bit of laughter. That's it. What else do we want to do on a Sunday morning? And we do lalasana. So let's, even if you fell out, come back in. Oh, I'm missing out on all the fun here on my own. <laughs> Crossing and then lifting up. Inhale. 
exhale coming down. No, I'm not. You're sharing it with me. Feet down, inhale, lift. Now let's do this for a few breaths. Yeah, can you see? So your feet are down and your buttocks lift, but it's not in your shoulders, it's from here. And then releasing. Legs up against the imaginary wall. This has turned into a pet yoga rather than jam yoga. Good. Okay. Leg pumps. Let's bend the left leg. So bring your left sole of the foot to the floor, like this triangle shape here. And then we just do very slow dorsiflex that foot so that that leg is solid, like it was in a plank pose in a Tadasana. And we slowly lower that right leg to almost the floor. Good. And then we bring it back up on the next breath. Let's do that a few times. And the spine is flat. And you may go in your body, oh, that's a bit easeful this morning. And let's just enjoy two more pumps being easeful. And if it's challenging, you don't go all the way to the floor. Do you do this with a breath? Beautiful. And then releasing, bend that leg. Bring the left leg up. You know what to do. The spine is long though. So I want you to actively push your whole spine into the floor. And you want to feel your left quadricep is solid. Couple of pumps. Can you bring the shoulders back to the floor? The whole spine. Yeah. Nice. Good. Now keep that left leg up, straighten the right leg, and then see if you can bring your left leg over your body. Ah. Where is it going? Is it dangling just midway? Can it come all the way to the floor? With the shoulder blade staying on the floor? Mm, sort of. No, my left shoulder lifts off. If you're more open in your body, bring that leg, bring that left leg up so you can actually grab it with your right hand. Yeah, or maybe you can hold on to the shin. Can you, I hope you can still see. And then you draw that leg up towards you. We're getting a beautiful opening in the lower back in that whole buttock area. And we turn the head to the other side. We could, we've done this this week, I think, in a yin class, but this is here active. Yeah. So that right leg, which is your straight leg on the floor, give that some attention and give your top leg some intensity. Let it come out to the side and let it come up to you. And then turn your head away. So if you haven't seen, I'm going to get off. I'm going to need to see what you're doing. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. Staying there. If you have that, that leg that's on top, that's out to the side, if you have that, if you can grab it, maybe you can draw it towards you a little more. Higher up towards your face. Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe the body could, but the mind can't be bothered. Well, well, I'll leave that up to you. Yeah, very nice. Good. Now, of course, we could do this with a belt. Of course, if we do this yin-like, yin then you just support yourself everywhere and become muscly. So, but now I want you to switch on from your belly. Bend that lower leg. So that leg on the floor, really bend it. Yeah, and then bring that top leg up. Much better that way for the lower back to come out. Both legs up against the imaginary wall. And before we go into the other side, we lower both legs. Just a little. This is core strength at its finest. The juice is in the slowness. So do this slow, nice and slow. Dorsiflex your leg. How far to the floor do you need to come? That's it. Being safe. Keep that sacrum. I know not everyone's favorite position. Hover where you need to. Maybe you come almost to the floor and can still have an inner smile, outer smile. Draw the legs back up. Bring that left leg or the other leg to the floor and the top leg, if you followed my instructions, the top leg will now be the right leg. Bring it over, turn the head to the other side. Oh, and maybe this side, the shoulder can stay on the floor and the leg comes to the floor, maybe not. If you have props at home or the sofa is just the right height, let that top leg be supported. But aiming to straighten it, 
So you can actually get a hold of it, maybe on the foot, maybe just on the thigh and bring it up high. That's it, Lisa. Doing well. And then looking over the other shoulder. Oh, feel into where this gets you. Beautiful. And you notice the higher, although maybe you don't notice it, the higher we bring that leg, the more intensity in the hamstrings and in your lower back. So make this suit you. Make this work for you. That's it, Sean. Yeah, that's it. You can let that foot now come to the floor. Yeah. Or you could snuggle closer to Marie and, and use Marie's leg as the prop. <laughs> of course, with your permission. Nice. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But, but this is work in progress. Maybe you can, you know, the sensations have eased, the tissue has eased a little. Can we straighten that top leg a little more? Can we, are we willing to bring it a little closer towards the face? Yeah, 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 it's all good, beautiful. Where is your Ujjayi breath? Are you still working on that C, being connected to your center? That's it, dude. That's it, Sabrina. Yep, we're still here. Nice, beautiful. And then I simply find it's easier if, you, if your um, floor leg starts to bend and then you come out of this shape. And then we're going to come into Apanasana, exhale, forward to the knees, inhale, coming out. Beautiful. Let's practice shoulder stand. Let's come into core again. That was the whole aim here. And then a bit of a stretch. Elbows next to your rib cage. Point your toes when you're ready. And then lifting the legs up and overhead and come up quite vigorously. Exhale, lifting up, inhale, coming down. So you can stay with legs against the imaginary wall. And this is teaching us the only thing later on in shoulder stand that's pushing down is our, what is this? Our elbows and our upper arms. So exhale up, get some heat back into the body, move from your core and inhale down. And if you can, control it with your core, slow it down. Yeah, I know this is strong. Oh, are we in shoulder stand already? I thought we'd do a few up and down. And then we come into shoulder stand. So when you're ready, come into a still shoulder stand. If that is what you want to do this morning, you could otherwise do shoulder stand against the wall. Or you could do a few more of those preparation movements. Ah, that's it. Good. I'm coming off. I'd like you to feel and understand that what's in touch with the floor. Yes, yeah, so Marie. I mean, you can do some fancy bits if you like. But I really like you to feel the elbows, the upper arms need to push into the floor. That's it, in the shoulders and everything else lifts up. So I'm not too close to you, but could I see your buttocks engaged? Could I see your thighs engaged? Could I see you aiming for length in your shoulder stand here, up to the ceiling, lifting the chin a little so the curve in the neck comes back. Of course, if you want to do fancy bits, you can lower one leg, and then bring it back up. Maybe not a full halasana. Good. But often when we do fancy bits, we sink down. Can you stay lifted? Can you push? You really need to feel your shoulders or your, your, your upper shoulders pushing into the mat. And then let's come into Karnapidasana. Like a rounded child's pose upside down. Knees pushing against your ears. Good. Or experienced students, if you want to, you can interlace the hands behind your back and then reaching the knuckles away from you. Can I squeeze? No, if I squeeze my ears, I'm squeezing. You can bring, sometimes they say knees can come to the forehead as well. Let me see. Oh, doing well. That's marvelous. So the upper body is this time a bit rounded here. Where is your breath? Ujjayi breath for three, for two, for one. When you roll out, could you keep your shoulders on the floor? Slowly, slowly rolling out. Control this with your belly. Beautiful, beautiful. And we come into fish pose. You can do the traditional variation, but I'm talking you through the non-traditional variation. Are we going for time? Just right. Elbows. Fingers pointing up. Elbows next to your rib cage. Legs pointed, lifting up. Push into your elbows. 
lifting the chest, let the head go back. You can let it go back to the floor and then feeling that opening in the whole front side from your pubic bone here really to your sternum. The shape is eventually capped by your back muscles. And if you can, lift the legs, lift the arms and come into Uttana Padasana. Now this is a strong posture requiring all your core strength, all your break strength. Let me see. You can do the traditional fish pose. Yes, some of them are looking at me going, what are you doing? You can do this. And then open and closing your mouth. Yeah, like a fish, just opening the throat. Ah, and then slowly coming on. Such a beautiful, beautiful back bend. And then slowly we wiggle up. Headstand. Yeah, we finished traditionally. If you want to just do legs up the wall, that's fine. Otherwise, I'll talk you through a tripod headstand. If you want to do bound, I'm going to come around to your screen. We can do bound together. Otherwise, measure your distance. Or measure your biceps, mum. <laughs> Hands into the, what's this, the imprint. But this is, be mindful, this is like your downward facing dog, like corkscrewing inwards and outwards. Top of the head to the floor. Et voila. Elbows in, long neck. Beautiful. A beautiful inversion. You don't have to go further, but if you want to, I know some of you will. That's it, Marina. Lovely choice. That's it. Nice, Lisa. One knee into the upper arm or just staying in any shape that you feel is useful. Nice, Sean. Beautiful. Good. Nice, Sabrina. Beautiful. Nice, Jerry. Everything you've chosen is... Oh, good. Good. Mind that neck there, Sabrina. Mind your shoulders. Beautiful. Slowly coming up. Yes. Awesome. What happens in a in a practice on your own. That's it. That's it. Amelia, how's the pie coming along? Yeah, not too good. Good, 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 good. Nice, Helly. Beautiful. And when you're ready, if you've just gotten your flow, stay. Otherwise, let's come into child's pose or two fists, two palms. Solid practice, yogis and yoginis, this morning. Beautiful. A bit traditional, a bit fancy to start with. Well done. We had everything, didn't we? <laughs> well done. Beautiful. So, and exactly an hour. So let's come to a seated position again. Oh, kudos to you. Thumbs up to you all. Well done. <laughs> oh, brilliant. What are we going to do? We're going to go to the yoga mudra. Yeah. So either, no, not either. We all do it together. Hold your elbows when you're ready. Lift and lengthen. Inhale. And whichever way you're sitting, let's come forward. And you can round. Yeah, just a little snuggle forward. Forward can come to the floor. But if not, then you just hang there. That's fine. And just feel into that whole lower belly area, that whole that area between your belly button and your pubic bone. And just see if you can energetically feel into that area physically and energetically feel into feeling that the energy is kept there and the heat that we've built. It's a bit like a reserve there and you can draw into that whenever you need to. That's where we keep it. And then slowly coming up. Change the cross of the legs if you're not in lotus. Change the cross of the arms. And we go in the other way for five breaths. Yeah, rounding forward, dangling forward. I'm not saying there's no sensation. Or maybe you notice now and you go, oh, we haven't had too many seated forward bends. Maybe after class, I need to do this and that for a little bit. That's it, that's it, let me see. No, I'm just sealing in that energy. That whole idea of purification. So we're building up heat, we're moving, we're burning the impurities. A bit like what we've done in the beginning. Let's come up slowly. Let's find your comfortable seat. A bit like what we've done in the beginning when we did that energy release, where we said, I'll just let go of what doesn't suit you. And we said that sort of burning of these 
impurities. They could be physical, food-wise. Find your um, Anjali Mudra. And they could be just karmic or energetic. And we all know from our logic and from our feeling that there's so many other systems we're working on and things that happen in yoga practice that we can't mention them all and sometimes we don't even have words for beautiful so let's have a moment just closing down the eyes and then like at the start of the class see if you can bring your awareness sense into your whole body this doesn't have to take long you just notice perhaps a shift from from the start, when I ask you to actually bring ujjayi breath into the areas where the awareness doesn't go so easily, or where the awareness goes quickly because there is a sensation. So notice how that may have shifted. Maybe it's a little bit more evenly distributed, the awareness. Maybe that body part that was singing out. now responding to your awareness differently. Beautiful, let's chant an om to close our practice. Let's exhale together. Big inhale. Oh. And our closing chant. Loka ha, Loka ha, Samasta ha, Samasta ha, Suki no bhavantu, Suki no bhavantu, together. Loka ha samasta ha sukino bhavantu. Bowing the head forward. The idea of finding a way with our own words, our own thoughts, and our own actions to let ourselves. And those around us have the freedom to be happy and free. Namaste. Beautiful yogis and yogi yoginis. Let's take Shavasana together. Yeah, I'll keep my eyes closed. I'll just feel my way into a comfortable, restful position. If you have props, I suggest a bolster or some some elevation for underneath your knees. Feet fall out to the side, palms away. So the arms slightly away from the body, palms facing up, fingers naturally curled. I come off for a moment. That's it. So there we go. Just going to write down who was practicing with us this morning. So Finding that neutral position for your skeleton, that's it. And finding rest, and I can just see that happens effortless. And that's a practice in itself. So kudos to you all for showing up on the mat this morning, for allowing yourself to be guided by your breath, by your feeling sense. Because let's be honest, most of life off the mat, we have to be guided. Not by the feeling sense, but by the logic. And so, When logic 
and feeling are in unison. That's when we can be happiest, most content, and as they say, our best self. So the practice of feeling, letting go, surrendering, dropping in the heart space is what happens in my yoga practice and ultimately in Shavasana. So enjoy. This is part of practice. Allow your jaw to be soft. Allow your eyes to be soft. Allow the belly to be soft. Allow your physical body and your energy field surrounding you. And you may have an idea of how that feels for you, how you perceive that. Allow that to soften as well. When you're influencing your outer environment with that sense of calmness, that sense of contentment, sense of inner peace and inner balance. And that is the practice. We lose it a little, we come back yoga, meditation, the focus is lost a little, we now focus back. What we experience in those times, the structure is lost a little, we bring it back. It always starts within. And those of you practicing here with pets or with young children, there's been a clear observation that you and your calm in the chanting in the shavasana, that energy field is felt by the children, by the family, by the pets, they calm them as well. So just how it is. Beautiful. Just another minute or so.